Hi there, welcome to another Rich Chinese Lesson Square Theatre podcast. You join me in my enchanted Greek forest of breasts and penises, which you'll, you might be able to see there if you look closely. Uh, we spent all of your badge money on this. It was stupid, really, now I think about it. It's not really got anything to do with the podcast, but it's pretty, isn't it? Uh, if you've enjoyed these, why not go to richherring.com slash gigs, see if I'm gigging near to you. Come and see me do some actual proper comedy, not just titting around making stuff up. I'm quite good. I know you wouldn't know it from watching this, but don't take this as being any way indicative of how amusing I am. I'm much better than that. Uh, anyway, I hope you will enjoy this week's Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast with me and Matthew Crosby. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who's been waiting a whole week to find out what happened in that Croydon school based version of Waiting for Godot for real. <laughs> it's Richard Harry! You're much better than last week's audience. So, uh, welcome to Richard Herring, Leicester Square Theatre. It'll come to a point where just the whole thing, I could do a whole episode of this and it'll just all be catchphrases all the way through <laughs> and then it'll just end. That's what I'm aiming for. Uh, no guests required. Welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I was there in Biker Grove uh, the other day. I don't know if you know it's. Um, they got like a youth centre up there and uh, PJ and Duncan, a couple of the lads there, were doing a rap. About, uh, it was about podcasts, and then they, in that rap, they called it Rahulastapa. And um, <laughs> Spuggy didn't know she wouldn't. Ju- she said she called it. She said no, it's Richard Harris. That's a square theatre podcast. She's thirty-eight years old now. So, um, <laughs> do you know what happened to Spuggy? Do let me know. So I'm doing observational comedy about a thing that most of you were not born. <laughs> Apart from like, David Frew, he was. He did you watch Biker Grove, David? No. no. Well, it would be weird, because you know, you'd have been there. <laughs> I watched it, and I was too old to watch it. So if you'd watched it, it would have been doubly bad. Let's just get uh, David Frew on here, just so you can see the kind of man we're talking about. <laughs> if I, uh, David, if I... Uh... We'll cut that bit out so it looks good. Oh, for fuck's sake, work! <laughs> there, it's working now. Uh, just edit that bit out. Uh, so, uh, David's eating minstrels. If I had to guess what year you were born in, <laughs> I would say... <laughs> 1961? Yes. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? That's, uh, David. <laughs> uh, that's just a little, uh, little uh, thing I could do. It's a little trick I've got. So, uh, I... Uh, I thought this week, it back in, it's back in history for you at home, but everyone was resigning this week, so I thought I might resign from Rich Chains' Leicester Square Theatre podcast, let someone else take over. Uh, but I don't know really who could do it. Would you, would you be up for it doing it, David? Do you think you could do as good a job as me? No. No? You prefer just to sit there and eat minstrels? <laughs> you been sharing, you sharing any minstrels? No. no. Is that a whole, that's a big pack of minstrels? You're not worried at your age that you're eating all that chocolate, all the arteries and things? No. Have you? <laughs> Someone likes yoga. So uh, it's... You do you know, you are a good-looking man. If it wasn't for your face and everything, you wouldn't know <laughs> your old man face. <laughs> I'm really I'm just horrible, aren't I? It's, uh, it's, <laughs> you're about... Oh, at least I've made someone laugh. It is myself. Uh, so yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to. Res- it's terrible. Everyone's gone in it. There's like this. Like there's no one l- ruling anything. The prime minister's gone. The leader of the opposition. Uh, it's probably <laughs> surely gone by now. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson's gone. You know, and his replacement. The bloke who gets his cock out and puts it on people's shoulders. Uh, that's not my words. That is the words of Bob Mortimer on this very podcast. And we should have known, really, it was coming. That's just, just all D. That's just what they do, isn't it, DJs? But anyone who's presented Top of the Pops, that's allowed, isn't it? You're allowed to put your cock on someone's shoulder. That is... Yeah? Yeah, that woman says it's all right. And that is a consent. If only I'd got it on video. So uh, that would be safe. Anyway, look, I'm going to uh, crack straight on. And... Because... Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry, David. 
I'll buy you, I'll, I'll, next week, there'll be, if you come next week, there'll be a free pack of minstrels <laughs> there for you. <laughs> You're a very good looking man, I was just flirting. So uh, will you please welcome a man who's probably best known uh, for being in the 1979 series Chopper Squad, which was a year before he was born. <laughs> an Australian TV series I think Reg Grundy produced. So I'm very interested to find out more about that. It's Matthew Crosby, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is, Matthew Crosby from Chopper Squad. Hello. It's from Chopper Squad. Hello, fans. Hello, there we go. Uh, so tell me about the 1979 Australian TV show Chopper Squad. Well, I thought you might mention this, Richard. <laughs> um, I, I've got an idea about the... Uh, well, I, I, I can only imagine there's yeah. another... Famous Matthew Crosby. Oh, well, there's no. a famous Matthew Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> From Chopper Squad. Chopper Squad. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember it. It, it was now, like was, people... was the chopper, was the chopper the, a BMX bike? I'm hoping, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> I'm not sure, but the only bit of trivia I saw about it was that it possibly uh, was uh, influenced Baywatch and was the, the thing in an Australian TV. So I imagine it was about... Uh, helicopters? Helicopters, people. Helicopter rescue? Yeah. People drowning. Someone saw that and said, get, let's get rid of the helicopters. Yeah. And, and replace it with fake boobs. <laughs> yeah. And that's, yeah. That's, let's yeah, play, replace works. it with David Hasselhoff's chopper. That could be what they thought. So, uh, let's... Uh, <laughs> don't know, don't know let's, that, was, that was a joke one. You're probably best known... Yes. ...for appearing in a children's version <laughs> of Way of God. That's right. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> Well, you said it was like a children's... It wasn't for children. I was sort of basically a child. Yeah. I was... Uh, that was when I was in sixth form. And Nish was... Uh, he was in year Nish seven. Kumar from last year. Nish, uh, Nish Kumar from, from... Some of the people won't have seen that here. Oh, yeah. So for those of you who didn't come along to both, um, <laughs> thanks to those diehard fans who stuck it out for both. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was at the same school, St Olav's, yeah. in uh, Orpington, not Croydon. Okay. Uh, sorry to pick you up. Nish comes from Croydon. Uh, that's why the mistake was made. But yeah, I, I went, I, I went to school in Orpington, and we did a production of Waiting for Godot. Yeah. And uh, I, I listened to the last week's episode. Oh, yeah, it's, a cra- it's a cracking episode. It's really, <laughs> really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, you said, "Oh, did he? Did he play Godot?" Yeah. I didn't. I played. Uh, um, uh, I played uh, Vladimir. But this is how the teacher who like directed the production was nuts and danced on. At the end, in a Union Jack bowler hat, holding a sign saying, I'm Godot, which he hadn't told us he was going to do. It was absolutely, it was insane. Why would you do, that's kind of the, like, you compl- like he was our English teacher as well. He was helping us achieve uh, A-level English. A, if you're asking. Um, and let's not talk about the other two, the theology and the history I did. But, um, but yeah, he, he was teaching us he, used to, he was, a ter- he was an, an awful teacher. I won't name him to shame him because yeah. um, I think he was having a lot of like, troubles. <laughs> um, but he, one day he came into class. He was like, okay, we're doing the importance of being earnest. I'm going to teach you from this book. And it was like one of those Cliff Notes books. And they'd spelt earnest <laughs> the wrong way right. on the front of the, uh, of the book. Yeah. They'd spelt it like the name, whereas it's the, the you know... Being earnest. It's being, being earnest, serious. exactly. Being serious, exactly. Yeah. So it's, is it any wonder... <laughs> that with that education, I cannot draw a crowd when I come and do your podcast. <laughs> You've done all right. I blame him. Done all right. But the St. Olaf. Some people have come from St. Olaf. So they might, Hello. They still are. They're still there. Come again. They loved it so much. Yeah, they enjoyed it so much. <laughs> but I don't think we were... You're much younger than me, is that right? No, I left about 10 years ago. You left about 10 years ago. Not changing the story. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> Had the entire break to do a bit of research. Think, when exactly was it? No, about 10 years ago. Fair enough. <laughs> Sounds like about a decade. I'm also very interested to have you on because you were uh, the programme associate. I'm associated with that programme, yes. Of uh, Improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. Correct. And I'm hoping to get the whole team together in one podcast one day. Well, Which will be a double length one, I think, because there's a lot of people involved. It's got to be, yeah. Uh, but um, so who... Because you sort of you put a sort of call out on Twitter... I did. Uh, ...a few days ago. Well, obviously, Mark Watson... Yes. Wouldn't be improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. Uh, <laughs> my dear Mark Watson. Um, right. Who? Because I. When I, you were the program associate on this, was there at any point during the work you went, 
Why are we saying improvisation, my dear Mark Watson? Why don't we just call it improvisation, my... Well, uh, let's think of well, another let's name. Let's break it down. Break, yeah, break you're right, you're right. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, it was originally... Now, it was, um, it was my friend Lee was making this, right. this show, which makes it sound like the least professional thing. Oh, my mate Lee did it. Um, but, but my friend Lee was, was making this show, yeah. and um, he... Uh, he liked calling TV shows silly names. Like he was, he was very into sort of how, what can I get away with in terms of silly names? Uh, he he did the the Roberts Web. Do you remember the Rob, yeah, Roberts do, yeah. Roberts Web? He wanted to call it Worldwide Roberts, yeah. which I think <laughs> is is very funny. It's funny. And he took it to the channel. I can't remember. It was maybe Channel Four. It must be Channel Four. Yeah. And they were like, we don't get it. It's like, oh, that's a shame because that's much funnier than than um, yeah. Roberts Web. Uh, and with this, he wanted to call it Improvisation, My Dear Watson. Uh, and then he again took it to the channel, which but this time was... Was it Dave? Do you know the channel I, this time? I think it was... I mean, I, I'm only there. vaguely associated to this programme. <laughs> uh, and they said, well, people won't know who the Watson is in this, so we've got to call it My Dear Mark Watson. He was like, all right. <laughs> Why the fuck not? <laughs> My improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. <laughs> yeah. But I think I think you think he doesn't know what a dumb title it is, and it clearly we were we were howling. Couldn't believe you know this was. Couldn't believe that they went. Yep, that's better. <laughs> you know this thing that we don't like. You've you've made it much worse, <laughs> but we like it more. That was what happened. Um, but yeah, so Do you I have was. Any good uh, memories of the days working as a. When you say program associate. Program associate is a job I do quite a lot, which is yeah. basically it's when they don't want to admit that they're using writers. Yeah. They call you the program associate. Yeah. Um, and well, it, with improvisation, my dear Mark Watson, they have to pretend. They have to pretend yeah, there are no writers. <laughs> uh, but the it's basically I wasn't writing. I was trying to devise games, and what that meant was I would go on the website for shows like um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Go on the Wikipedia page. It's very much how you do your podcast. Yeah. Just start with Wikipedia. Yeah. I'd go on the Wikipedia page for st shows like Whose Line Is It Anyway? And uh, we would pick games they didn't play all that often. Yeah. And then you would try and add in a cool new thing like Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you would say... <laughs> so you'd, you'd, you'd take sort of two-headed expert, except... He owned a MySpace page, guys, and that was what the the, the story was. Because they wanted to make yeah. it sort of a, a sort of funky, trendy. They also had they uh, they had, it was all done in front of a green screen. Because I, I didn't um, I wasn't there on the night when they recorded it, nor did yeah. I watch it when it was finished. But um, I've I've heard possibly from you on this podcast yeah. that they did it all on a green screen, and they were just like so if if. For example, Robin Ince was playing the trumpet. Robin did the non TX pilot. Yeah, Robin wasn't in it. No, he he. I don't know if we can have him. You can't some, have him. I don't know if we can when we're bringing back improvisation, my dear Watson. Could you please do Mark two? Watson with Justin Lee Collins, grab getting everyone together yeah. first of all. Then uh, I don't think Robin can come. Could you not do just for the people who who bought the badges yeah. a special a special <laughs> one off about the non TX version, the non transmitted? Yeah, yeah. Pilot version that didn't get shown. Could you do that as well? Well, yeah, okay. I don't. I okay. Think that, I think that people will want that much in depth about this. <laughs> do you feel from that a man who plays snooker against himself? <laughs> yeah. Come on, mate. Do you think we've maybe done more about this program now in this conversation than, than, people, than anyone wants? Than definitely. Anyone but, here, yeah. Fuck so these I guys. This is for us. It is for us. Um, yeah, I, I so yeah, they, they would sort of put in like funny things uh, around it. If they weren't saying a funny thing, they'd be yeah. wearing a funny cartoon hat <laughs> all the way through it. It's a shame it only got one uh, one episode. It was a shame. Yeah. It's a good. It was a good premise. It was a good title. It was a, some good some good writers behind it. <laughs> and uh, it would have been nice to get a bit more work out of it. But there you go. That's showbiz, isn't it? It is. So talking of uh, researching people on Wikipedia, yes, I researched you on Wikipedia, yes, and it said that um, I can't find the bit, but I can remember it from my mind. Oh yes, you were you were in the. It says on Wikipedia that you were in the BBC New Act of the year two thousand and five, and you got to the semi-finals where you were beaten by Aqua. <laughs> And there's no citation needed on that, so I'm assuming that is... I'm assuming that you were beaten by the band who sang... I, I, had, I had a very good five minutes, but it <laughs> wasn't as good as Barbie Girl. And... And, well, actually, what happened was they did Barbie Girl in the quarters. In the semis, they did Dr. Jones. Um, 
Uh, Rene was a, a, a very, a very funny man and a joy to work with. Now, I think what's happened there is occasionally, and this happens to a lot of people, yeah. uh, people go on your Wikipedia page yeah. and just write things that aren't that aren't true. <laughs> There was one, there was one a few, because a few years ago, my, my friend Helen Saltzman, who I, I used to live with, uh, who does a, a, n- another really fun podcast, Answer Me This, uh, she started getting people to do it, to put stuff, she put real facts about me then to get yeah. other people to put. Um, so, for example, when I, she said it, he only wears white socks, that was true, I used to only wear white socks, I used to just buy, like, you know, bulk buy white socks, I didn't have to think too much about what socks I was going to wear. Um, you know, How much time did that save? Well, I don't know. Do you know what? I, I, I genuinely, it was, it's from the movie, uh, it's from the movie The Fly when they talk, when, when he talks about Albert Einstein. This is what a pretentious dick I was. But like, I was watching a guy build a time machine in this film and going, yeah, I'm probably wasting a lot of time thinking about what I'm wearing. So I bought just a bunch of pairs of Farrah slacks. Yeah. Uh, I bought a pair of campers. I bought loads of Primark uh, uh, plaid shirts yeah. and loads of white socks and, and uh, an underwear and thought, that's it. Now I'm going to become Einstein. And uh, just three years later, I was a program associate <laughs> on improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. Um, but yeah, the people used to put weird stuff up. Uh, yeah. One of them was like, uh, he's scared of Alton Towers. And this was before, you know. So. <laughs> but if you, if you want to put, there's nothing on my, yeah. like my Wikipedia page. I, 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 the only reason I know what's on it is because I did a, a gig the other day and the, um, sometimes when you do a gig, there's not much about you on the internet. They just take the first paragraph <laughs> of the Wikipedia. So it's just like, he was born in Bromley. He did a gig in 2006. Come, come and see him on Thursday. Like, that's all it said. So if anyone wants to update my Wikipedia page with either real or imagined facts, just please go for it. Fill your well, boots. They could say, you, I like to research the childhood of my guests. Okay. I can um, tell you about my childhood. Well, you know, I like to know. I like to be able to surprise you with some facts about the town that you grew up in. But it doesn't say you were born in Bromley, so does it not? No, so that's a useful thing to add in. There we go for, for, for interviewers of the future. What was it like growing up in Bromley? Did you go to? Hang on, I'll just edit something in. The famous attraction there. <laughs> yeah, every. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I remember it when it was called. The, uh, ne- uh, of name. course, you know. Um, and no, you I could do this as a game in the next series of improvisation. <laughs> with Mark Watson, yeah. <laughs> this, but it would have to be about Snapchat now. You realise, okay. unfortunately. Um, I, I still live in Bromley. Mm. Uh, I grew up in Bromley. I still live there. Uh, it's, uh, it's very nice. It was pretty much a, a 50-50 split. Uh, leave remain. Was it? Yeah. Uh, but just on the right side. Okay. Go home, Nish. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's fine. It's where David Bowie uh, comes from. I used to work at the uh, MVC in Market Square, which is the Market Square that he talks about in the song Five Years." You know, moving through Market Square. So uh, that's the that's the biggest claim to fame I've got. <laughs> is that? Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's nice. You know, it's the largest of the thirty-two uh, London boroughs. <laughs> um, but no one really th- people think of it as Kent. Yeah, uh, but it's but it's not. It's uh, <laughs> it was declassified as Kent before I was born, but yet still, still when I write, when I wrote my address as a child, my parents just sort of you know I guess they just you know they were around in the seventies. I I wasn't. They remember the heady days of the Chopper Gang, um, and they were Chopper Squad. I apologise, I wasn't there. Like I say. Uh, <laughs> wasn't around uh, but yeah they would they would write Kent in the in, in my address and so I just you know just did it yeah. but now eventually everyone's gonna stop and then I'll I will stop um, but but now yeah now I live in sort of Elmer's End uh, Anley Penge kind of that kind of that kind of area absolutely whereabouts whereabouts do you do you live uh, near Penge West near Penge Anley and Penge do you live uh, oh do you live do you live on Anley Park Trenholm. Oh, this is the you... kind of thing I'd be doing if it said that on the. It's exactly what I'd be Wait, doing. Hang, hang on. Uh, key, key question: do you, do you own or do you rent? I own. Do you? When did you buy? You must have bought. Three years ago. Oh, you absolute jammy bastard! Yeah, well done. <laughs> I got priced out the area I bought a year ago, and I'm in fucking Elmer's End. Oh well. Anyway, why can't I fill a room? Uh, uh, <laughs> the question always pops up whenever I'm doing. I'm, 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 I'm doing gold. I, I, I'll entertain one person at a time. That's yeah. what I do. And entertain is a strong word for what that just was. 
<laughs> who did beat you in the BBC New Act semi-final? Did you get through? Uh, I think it was John Luke Roberts. Okay. Uh, I think there were two heats. It was on the Wibbly Wobbly boat. No, 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 it was on the Tatchell Castle. Oh, yeah. And it was, there were two heats that night, and it was Joe Wilkinson and John Luke Roberts. So both amazing, amazing acts. Yeah. Um, although at the... <laughs> no aqua, though, are they? No aqua. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are they still, are they still an ongoing proposition? I hope so. I would have thought so. They were very you good. Know, they've got those two songs and keep them going. You yeah. never hear enough of those two songs and probably a third one they did that's not as famous. Well, we can look it up later. Yeah. But um, I loved I loved Dr. Jones. Yeah. Because the thing, you know, um, like they were kind of like rednecks. Yes, except they were. I was, the rednecks <coughs> was very much my go-to. You, Cotton Eye Joe and, and then, then Poppin' Old Oak. Yeah. And then Picking a Poke, wasn't it? No, Poppin' pop Old Oak came away. Uh, came oh, away. Maybe yeah, that's just old oak, Poppin' Old Oak, Poppin' Old Oak. Poppin' Old Oak. Poppin' Old Oak. Poppin' Poppin' Old Oak. Poppin' Old It's basically Cotton Eye Joe, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but about an old man smoking a pipe up a tree. Oh, man. Not a man who had cotton for eyes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> know your audience, rednecks. Um, but they did Barbie Girl, and then they picked another huge <laughs> franchise, the Indiana Jones movies, yeah. for, Doctor, for, for Dr. Jones. They just, presumably, you know, they did another one about Spider-Man that no one really, <laughs> <laughs> no one really picked up on. Hard to reboot Spider-Man. <laughs> so uh, you're on Dirty Brick Com Confessions. Have you seen, there's quite a lot of you on Dirty Brick. Is there? Yeah, I'm su a surprising amount. No, I look, I, I, well, I, I look at that quite yeah. a lot, but I look to see my, like, again, my friend uh, Josh Widdicombe, yeah. because it, they're the least, like, it's always like, I want to kiss him and drink yeah. a cup of tea and stroke his hair. And then it's like, Frankie Boyle, I want him to hate fuck me. And it's like, you can really <laughs> tell the kind of comedian you are by what, so let's find out. Yeah, well, there's quite, there, uh, most of them are of the Josh Widdicombe variety. Okay, fair enough. Not that, literally, although there might be in a couple. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to strip every piece of clothing off of Matthew Crosby, except his glasses, and ride him until they fog up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <Yeah. laughs> um, ride him until they fog up. <laughs> I think I, you know, I could get that bit in a way, but I think the yeah. taking your clothes off bit by bit, I think... Why, what, why not just, bit by bit? Well, Fold just, them up? Yeah, pop them on the, that's, that's one. Pop just, them on the armchair next to... I think when yeah. we get there and you're just... I, I, I mean, it's easy. I wear poppers, yeah. uh, so it's, it'd be easy to get, get the okay. shirt off, but... So they say every every item. Every item. They don't we'll specify. You will have nothing. Identical Farrah slacks. <laughs> his two white socks. You'll have everything on except your. Uh, you have everything off apart from your glasses, which will remain. No, I, on. I, I and don't, then I, we'll fog up. If your glasses. Have you ever worn your glasses during intercourse? And have they ever fogged up during intercourse? Uh, no and yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I, I was not partaking in the intercourse. They fogged up during. Um, <laughs> No, I, 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 I yeah. No, I, I, I don't. It's because it's, uh, it's hard to. You, do you ever wear glasses? Well, I have reading glasses now, but I don't wear them. <laughs> but yeah, it's you, you're never so aroused by the book you're reading when no. you leap on top of Katie. No. Uh, but no, I. It's there. It's hard to. It's hard to kiss with glasses on. Yeah. I think it's hard to like you know, really kiss like I do it. Um, <laughs> It, that's that's tricky. Uh, so yeah. So I. I, I so would I you haven't. be up for someone taking your clothes off and, and having riding you? And to, I mean that could be just it, like on your it back. It could just be. <laughs> it should could just be horsey time, couldn't it? Yeah. No, I I'm up for it, but it would have to be my my, my beautiful wife. Okay. Surely your wife can make an exception for people who put things on dirty brick com confessions. <laughs> or what I kind of marriage that is, is that? No, she definitely wouldn't. <laughs> she absolutely definitely wouldn't. Well, that would not she's be. Very, that is very, that's a very strict interpretation of the marriage vow. She's old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew Crosby is the hottest ex-teacher ever. Oh, uh, damning I, with faint <laughs> praise there, isn't it? I want to role-play with him being a teacher and me being a naughty student. Uh, uh, I thought we could do that now. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh... Fuck off! Oh, God. Um, right, no, shit. Uh, seriously, I, uh, uh, seriously, I, I, I will... Uh, uh, Dean, Dean, fucking Dean, dick. Dean, I will call your mother, all right? Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get her on the phone right now. Don't care. Fuck you. Okay, that seems fair. I'm probably going to leave. <laughs> um, I, was, I was a very ineffectual teacher, yeah. so there was nothing, no, uh, nothing commanding about me at all as a teacher. I was 22 when I was... Uh, teacher wow. at one point like the, 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 the reason I quit to do 
uh, comedy. In fact, it was around the same time as doing the, the competitions. I thought, well, that's enough of an, of an in. You know, I'm getting to the semi-finals of competitions. I may as well get out now while the getting's good. Um, but one of the, the worst was uh, a kid. What was his name? I shouldn't even say. But um, he... <laughs> Uh, he came at me with a, an entire table. He was just so angry. He pushed the entire table across the classroom. And I, I, there was nowhere to go because I was at the end of the classroom. I sort of just stood in the corner. And he, like, rammed the corner of the table right into my uh, genitals. Wow. And I just went to another room. Uh, just went, OK, guys, I'm going to just go somewhere else to deal with what's happened here. <laughs> and I went to another room. And I took a photo of my face. And I would look at it any time I was thinking, teaching's all right. <laughs> I just had it as the wallpaper on my, yeah. on my phone. No, I didn't. I, I, I took a photo of my face and I would just look at it and I'd be like, right, that's the face of what you... Because like sometimes when I'm getting... Sometimes when I'm getting the train, I'll see, like, I'll see you know, a bunch of school kids. I'll be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I do miss sort of imparting information to young minds. And then they'll inevitably say something rude to me. I'll be like, yeah, that's the reason. It's, it's the problem. They're just... Young people are just terrible. <laughs> just awful. But they, just, they don't realise. We were all like that at school. Yeah. I imagine you were, you know... I think I was, yeah, I was a pretty massive... Dick. I mean, I was always trying to be... Me and my friends were always trying to be funny all the time, so yeah. we, gave, we gave a... Any weak teacher like you, we would have given a very oh, hard time. Absolutely. I wouldn't have so much mind if they were trying to be funny. I mean, it yeah. was, in retrospect, the table gag yeah. was a lovely bit of business. <laughs> that was a lovely bit of Buster Keaton-style business, but no, uh, they, they weren't even funny. They were just... They just... They just, like, you know, they, it was like sharks with a sniff of blood. They yeah. could just tell I was weak, and they took, uh, took How full advantage. How do they advantage. know that? How do... What... what differentiate well, you obviously are not I, I look like this yeah. for starters <laughs> but it's weird isn't it because like some teachers you would just absolutely behave for and some teachers you really wouldn't and I wonder what it how a child how a classroom of kids know which kid that is I suppose they just test the water it's until the exact same up. thing as doing comedy yeah. you know if you come out and you and you go uh, like if you stumble over something or you show a sign of what you can play a self-deprecating character but if you show that you're not quite in control of the situation in a tough gig yeah. the audience will uh, will turn yeah. So uh, look forward to that later yeah, on. Yeah, well, I am. <laughs> I'm very much... I know everything that's happening, and I am very much in control, so it's fine. The mostly question, is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if you... <laughs> Let me see if I've got a new one. Did I write a new one down today? Uh, no. Have this totally is a, control. This is one I copied. Oh, no, what, why? This is one my wife asked. Okay. When the news was very bad, we'd had the awful things happen in the news, and we yeah. had went out for dinner, and neither of us could talk to each other because we were so upset. And we then walked out of the restaurant and left, and then as we were walking along, my wife said, I've got a question for you. It's not what you're expecting. And I said, okay. Okay. Well, and firstly, she, what yeah. were you expecting? Well, I don't know. I thought it would be about the awful news. It was an awful news thing that happened okay. that day. Uh, and, uh, she was like, where are Aqua now? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost. She said, why do we have frozen peas? <laughs> Because they last longer. <laughs> yeah, but her uh, point being, that's what I thought. Yeah. But her point being, most vegetables now we have fresh. And the, there aren't many, you know, it's the, you'll just have them in, but peas, you can have fresh peas, but nobody really does have them very often. Everyone has frozen peas. Why is that the only. Is that's it the main format of peas is frozen. Is it because they're hard to shell them. or tinned? Well, I, this is what I said to her. Yeah, but hard sometimes tinned, but tinned is horrible, isn't it? But I, I think frozen peas are nicer than they the actual nice, yeah. peas. Uh, that is a very... I mean, I, mean, I was going to say a very good question, but it's, a, it's not. Um, <laughs> but it is definitely a question that I can't answer. Well, well, I've, answered, every, I, I've know, given you two answers that I think you're just batting away, because even though they're corn, the, they are the correct answer. Sweet corn you can fry, freeze, but I think you'd have more often tinned. Rather than, that's kind of unusual. Tinned, Most yeah. vegetables are fresh these days. You feel like it's a harking back to something sure. from the past. So you'd have vegetables in tins in the old days. Although now you, you, know, you, you have beans. can get the mixed veg. You, I still yeah, see. I mean, yeah, but I think that might be a that might just be might be you no, it's with your bloody Abel everyone. and Cole account. <laughs> um, I think people still. I mean, they're, they're clearly still there. Yeah, they're still there. Those big bags of like uh, chopped carrots and sweet corn and, and, and peas and little yeah. green beans and stuff. But you're just not buying them. I don't think it's just. I don't think anyone buys them. I talk. Someone to must do. They want, they're still in. We see them in the supermarket. Doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean it. Wait, hang on a sec. Someone just said I do very quietly. Who was that? Was it you, Andy? No, no. Behind him. You still buy them? Absolutely. 
Yeah, so like a bloke like that obviously does, yeah. But <laughs> oh, how dare you? He's wearing a tie. He looks like a very smart he individual. Is, he's, he go, he'll go home on his own. He'll be sitting in his pants in a little... <laughs> he hasn't even got a kitchen table. He'll sit in his kitchen. There's not just Doesn't a chair there. There's not, there's not even a table in the kitchen. Is there? It's just you sit in a little, one little chair you've got in a skip. <laughs> and you eat your... Own, you, don't even, um, you don't even cook the vegetables. You just eat the frozen... <laughs> <laughs> He gets the bag of frozen vegetables and he just eats them like that. Do you think it could be you that's driving the crowds away? <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly lovely fellow in entire volunteers that he still buys frozen veg to assist a question that was going fucking nowhere, we can all agree. That is... And you take him down to Chinatown. Yeah. Sorry, mate. It's absolutely fine. It's my first time here. Oh, well, yeah. first and last time here, I imagine. This is why Welcome they come. Welcome to the herring treatment. This is why they come. Some women or men want to have you as a teacher telling them off. Blokes like him come here because they want to have their life pulled apart by me. <laughs> That's why Louise David threw here every day, looking at him with his mi- minstrels all down his face. <laughs> so you're having the time of your life, aren't you, David? I've got frozen cauliflower. You've got frozen cauliflower. He's got cauliflower. frozen cauliflower. <laughs> Horrible, though, isn't it? It's a weird snack to bring to a theatre, but. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever cools well, you down. Well, you're all insulting my wife and her brilliant well, question. Well, no, I think, it's a, I think it's an interesting question, but I think yeah. we've given the answer. They last longer, they're hard to shell. Also, That's what I they're, said they're ice, ice packs, aren't they? Well, they are useful, yeah. That's useful to have in the, in, in the fridge yeah. if you, um, you know... Lose a finger. Well, I mean, yeah, if you want to go bleak. <laughs> um, just, you know, if you, you know, uh, yeah. burn your hand or something like that, yeah. Just an, it's interesting to be distracted by that question and think about it, I think. It is. And, and it's, I think it's a question to ask whenever something horrible happens in the news, i.e. every time, <laughs> every, every day. Every 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Why okay. do we have frozen peas? Uh, this is a question from Buzz Nigeria. Which are you... T- <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> is, that, is, is that a character from a knockoff version of Toy Story? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good website where... You can get some excellent emergency questions. Which are your two favourite careers and why? <laughs> My two I don't think they have to be your own co- careers. They oh, careers. I think it's yeah. Koreans. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> wow. Well, someone well, had... one from the north, one from the south. Let's do it right. <laughs> someone, um, someone did put on one of the YouTube questions that they thought it's which are your two favourite careers. Like north and south. Be, <laughs> <I> mean, <that's... laughs> um, so that would be quite... Careers. What, what are your favourite you careers? careers? To what are your favourite careers? Um, I. <laughs> it's a question to ask someone the, according uh, to it, Buzz Nigeria. Is, is it that I've. Uh, it, I don't find, think. I think terms, is it that, that I've done? I, well, I can't define the terms of Buzz Nigeria. I think, it's, I think it's any, any career that you would like, I imagine. It's a terrible question. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a terrible question. Okay. I think it's, Sorry, I think it's, I think it's way too broad. I think what's, <laughs> what's your favourite career would have been fine, but I think the fact. It's because you've got to pick two. You think, oh, maybe they should complement each other. But no, no, why should they? I'm always very impressed whenever I meet anyone who either works for a charity, even though inevitably you go, that's amazing. They go, no, it's shit. The money's always misspent. Uh, Or someone who works in uh, in a museum. I always think those would be the two. Are those careers, though? Working in a a, a museum, that's a a career. Yeah, I mean, I met someone the other day. Uh, Victoria, are you here? Everyone I met, everyone <laughs> I met chance, comes here. Um, <laughs> the chances are low. I mean, no, no chance. Uh, no, no, <laughs> well, get ready to eat. Get ready to eat humble frozen peas because Victoria, you are here, aren't you? Yeah. What? <laughs> Can you sense people that? Is this like your sixth yes, sense? I'm getting, I'm getting frozen cauliflower. Has anyone? Has anyone got any frozen cauliflower on their person? Where do you Where do you work, Victoria? Who's reluctant to speak to us? At the British, At the oh, British, British Museum. Museum. Do you remember when Nish Kumar came round by the? Yeah. Was it last week? Yeah. That's good. It was funny. That was funny. It was funnier than you know. It was should have got a big laugh, but it's hard, isn't it? In comedy, <laughs> looks easy and it's not. Fun. But anyway, it, it, look, the question we're asking is: Please stop being so mean, Richard. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the question we're asking is: It is a, it's a career, isn't it? Yeah. That's enough. <laughs> Lights back down, guys. Uh, well, Craig, I learned today, who's one of our cameramen, used to work as a charity mugger. Didn't Did you, Craig? You? <laughs> <laughs> and you only had to get two people a day to get enough to make it work. Is that right? That's insane. Do you, do you give to any uh, charities? Have no. You... Oh, no, I do. I, do uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give to charity muggers. 
You don't give to charity, but no. do, you, do, you give, do you have a, a direct debit to any, any charities? Uh, yeah, the Kings of Wessex Trust. Okay. What do they do? They give money to disadvantaged children in Cheddar. To okay. let them, to let <laughs> Isn't that all children in Cheddar? <laughs> 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 to go to, uh, like, do stuff for education. Fantastic. Uh, I, uh, I do a little bit of work for Scope. I've only raised <laughs> £300,000 for them. So. You should tell people about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> what's this bushel and what's that light underneath it? Come on, Richard. Open up, mate. Um, so the <laughs> no, the, the thing is, because I, I I give to two charities, yeah. and I am so delighted when I get the charity mugger from them, and I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I actually sort of loiter, trying to get caught with like, <laughs> you know, when, whenever it's the charity, I get already give to it, mate. A little high five. Yeah. So it's a great feeling. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, except they're not great. They're thinking shit. That's my. That could have been my one of. The, that could have been my one of. Yeah, because yeah, he would have been a perfect customer only yeah. six months ago. I, I did a terrible thing on, on the way over here where I thought someone was going for a high five. Uh, and it's, all, it's terrible. Uh, I've, I, I was just walking past, the, uh, I was walking past the hairdressers and a little kid ran out, probably up five years old, and put her hand up. And I was like, all right, and put my hand towards her and she like recoiled like stranger danger. And then I looked up and obviously the hairdressers was, in, in the hairdressers, which has notoriously glass-fronted, uh, was her family just looking at me like I just tried to grab her. It was awful. And if the hairdresser's like three doors down from where I live, so I have to move now. And as I've already said, I've priced out the area. I can't. So I now just live in the crawl space under my house. What was she doing? Putting your hand up. I don't know, maybe she's like waving to someone on the other side of the road or whatever. I, I mean, thought it would be... Isn't that the first thing you would assume oh, rather than that child was to high-five them? The problem, problem is, in my... <laughs> she probably watches Bad Alts. <laughs> <laughs> very, very unlikely. But, uh, but yeah, she might, she might have a Netflix account. Um, but I know, I thought... I don't know what. I thought, you know sometimes when you think, oh, the world... I, I just sort of... I've been sat, sat in my flat all day. I hadn't really... I, I had like one thing I needed to do, which meant me leaving the house. I hadn't really talked to anyone. I don't know if that's coming across. Um, but, but I was like, oh, the world actually is a lovely place. Look at this little kid who wanted to high-five a stranger. But no, she didn't, and she was upset, and so were her family, and boom. Yeah. When that happens to you, though, can you not just pretend you're a sort of a weird kid with some kind of beard growth <laughs> disorder? <laughs> just go, it's all right. No, it's all right. I'm five as well. <laughs> that is getting into even worse territory <laughs> than just carrying on walking to Elmer's End Station, I think. If I was you, I would shave and so that I could pretend to be five years old in that sort of situation. If I shave, do you think I'd look five yeah, years I old? Yeah, I do, because you're very small. That is what I'm saying. How, wait, is... what's the difference in our height? About, about an inch and a half? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's key. It's, <laughs> it's a pivotal inch and a half. Wait, you're, you're, You've you been in waiting for Godot. You know what this is about. If you, the, the, you know, you're the it's one about <laughs> one man being shorter than the other. It's not it's what it's about. about. Whatever we'll kick down, whoever is below us, and literally you are. And you're the one guest I've ever had on here who is smaller than me. Is that true? <laughs> is that the reason you booked yeah. me? Yeah. Well, it, there's no other reason. <laughs> um, no, you, honestly, you, I'm the smallest guest you've ever had on. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably even even out of the ladies. How big are your how big your hands? Oh, oh. I dwarf dwarf my hands. I've still got the smallest hands. What is what competition is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you've got the hands over me that you can. Yeah, but no, but I don't live my life <laughs> seeing what I can get over on people in terms of size of body parts. <laughs> Well, when, the girl put her, when the girl put her little hand out, I was going, oh, ho hooray, high five, not, ah, uh, call those hands, these are hands, you bitch, slap. <laughs> You're a strange man, you really are. Strange man. Uh, this is a question from Ali's Randomage. He's going to ask you two questions. He's got 800 questions on his uh, okay. website. Let's do or her, her website. <laughs> These are two of the best ones. Have you ever flown a kite? Yes. <laughs> how, how did that go? For you? It doesn't it have a follow-up question. Ali's random pitch. Well, so, I, so I, I will follow it up. I've, I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've yeah. flown a kite. Yeah. I've, uh, I've made a kite. I've flown wow. a stunt kite. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had lots of fun uh, times with with kites. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I recently was on a beach in uh, Kerala, and they sell little kites there, mm. and. Uh, I had to stand next to a man uh, flying a kite while his son had a photograph taken with my wife. 
So, because apparently people with red hair are very exotic. Yeah. Like, it was really exciting because uh, for, for once, one of us got to behave like a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we went, uh, like groups of kids would like take photos of my, my wife, and then like whole families would want to stand with her and yeah. have photographs. So uh, so yeah, so yes, I have flown a kite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. It's interesting how it got into the whole your wife having red hair and stuff. That's true. Yeah. The, but I, I thought think there's some resentment in there about her being in Kerala being. No, I loved it. It was really exciting. Because you'd think, they think, oh, look at that very small man. Let's get a photo taken with him. <laughs> Not in Kerala, unfortunately. All the men are pretty small. Yeah, it's a real shame. Where uh, could I go? With it, like, like, somewhere like Norway, where they're all uh, big strapping... L Lilliput. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is another... Earth. This is this... <laughs> Oh, oh God, that really made me laugh. <laughs> this is another question from Ali's Randomage. I've looked through it so you don't have to. These are the only two of the 800 that are good. Okay. Yeah, have you flown a kite? It's a good question. It's a great man. question, That's, yeah. I've, I've have you flown a kite? Yeah. Uh, of course you have. I, uh, I once, uh, when I was a few years ago, when I was, the girlfriend was with the time, that I was on a beach in Cornwall with their entire family, and they had like a little two-year-old child, <laughs> and they had this kite. They were really into flying kites. It was Julia Suarez's family. Let's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, her little nephew uh, was little tiny. He was going, whoa, and I was, I was doing the kite, and I gave it to him. Oh, no. And he just let it go. Oh. <laughs> and so it flew all the way up over the, into the town, and we had to go and get it, and Julia Suarez was really angry with me. And I said, I said, you know, you want to hold it? And he said, yeah, but he's two. He's not going to hold it. So he made me look like a right idiot. Yeah. <laughs> We've got real beef with little kids, you and I, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Those pricks won't let us have our fun. I thought you were going to say, I mean, I think we were all hoping yeah. that that was going to be like, you the kid grabbed it and then shot off over into the sea and disappeared and you never saw the kid again. No, he's and that's fine. the reason it all broke But funny enough, I think I might have said this last time I asked the question, but I can't remember. I never listened back to these. Um, so, uh, but Julia, we once, she loved kites and we once went to the club, to Tooting Common, to a kite festival. This oh yeah, one, and uh, sh there was like a, one of the really big kites, and the guys flying it, were a massive one. And she said, "Can I have a go?" And she lifted off the ground and nearly flew away. So she did that. Did Julia Suwala, one of the many ways she nearly got killed in loads of different ways when I was going out with her. There's about three, three of not by not, uh, not, nothing to do with you. No, she nearly got. Let's just go to this kite. <laughs> that was because that's a thing. <laughs> She was oh, Julia, there's a kite festival. Off. Just because all of the people at this kite festival are actors you may have seen <laughs> from, you know, from TV shows I've been in. She flew off the ground. How far off the ground? Like a few feet and something like to grab her and pull her back down. Grab her ankle. Yeah. <laughs> it might have made me misremember. I think, yeah. Did she, did she, was she so excited that she jumped? And that's the story. <laughs> uh, are you still in touch, you and her? Not, not, no. <laughs> Have you seen the Ab Fab movie? No. It was good. I really liked it. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw it yesterday. I was, I was concerned, but lots of people are saying it's, it's cool. really, really funny. Okay. It's super, super funny. Um, I mean, it's, it's like it's all over the place. It's like they're writing the plots by like laying down train tracks <laughs> as the train's going along, but that's yeah. sort of the excitement of it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's really, really good. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Crosby's Recommendations, where I recommend a thing that's probably going to do fine without. <laughs> This isn't uh, coming out until like, August anyway. So. Oh, well, in which case, right in time for the Blu-ray. <laughs> um, this is the other question yes. from Alan's Rand. Have you ever demolished a wall or a building? <laughs> <laughs> and I like that it's both the, both the options yeah. are there. Like, have you ever demolished a wall? No, have you ever demolished a building? Oh, yeah, I have demolished a building. <laughs> now I think about it. Oh, I suppose that had walls. Now I think about it. Uh, <laughs> I Are you a demolishing country? When I was a kid, I threw rocks, at, me and my friends threw rocks at an old house in the woods and it, till bits of it fell down. I mean, it was already quite fallen down. But you didn't demolish it, did you? Well, no, the big bits, it's so exciting. Big Wh bits which, bits, which bits fell down? Well, just like, like you throw a rock and then it was like an old stone house, so you know, it was already fallen down, but then bits of the wall would fall down. When, when you're you throwing rocks at it. When? I was 28 it, years old. Okay, of course. <laughs> when, what, when, 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 when? It was when, in Shippen Woods. Yeah. In about 1983. Okay. You were three years old, you could have come and helped us. Oh, that's, that seems like something like very oldy worldy as a, as a thing to do, even in 1983. Yeah. 
To throw rocks at a building? Throw rocks at a building, but like throw rocks at an old old stone house till it fell over. Yeah. You should be going out and watching the Human League. <laughs> Surely you should be. I lived in Somerset. Oh, fair, fair enough. Jim and Wood was as good as it got. No, I've never, I've never, I, I've, I fell over a wall. Yeah. Um, uh, I had a very tough gig in Eastbourne. Um, which went really, really badly. It was one of Jim Grant's gigs. They were always tough to play, and I had a really terrible time. And at the at the end of the gig, I was sort of went and stood outside the outside the venue, and I didn't realise it was very dark. I was chatting to Carl Donnelly, and there was a very low wall, yeah. and I didn't realise. And I I fell over the wall and then rolled back into the venue where I just died. <laughs> Um, I, split, I, I, I tore my trousers open, I cut my knee open, yeah. and so I just, I went, uh, yeah, thanks very much everybody, uh, you hated me, and I, and I think I ended it by going, oh, you know what, I fucking hate Eastbourne, or something like, you know, like something mature like that, to get the crowd on side for the last round of applause, and I walked off, and then, while Jim was still comparing, like, ten seconds later, I rolled back into the venue, co- <laughs> covered in blood, <laughs> for my encore. <laughs> They're not a good answer to the question, though. No, no. not, so not technically. Have you ever fallen over a wall? I mean, basically, what you've story. asked me is a series of questions, and I've told you uh, unrelated anecdotes <laughs> in order to save myself. Have you ever flown a kite? No, but someone took a photo of my wife. Um, have you ever have you ever demolished a building? No, but I once did a gig for Jim Grant. Yeah. I feel the wife story was a bit of a humble brag as well that you were saying to people. I know I don't look like it, but, but I I've got a wife. <laughs> yeah. A woman who wants to marry there's, me. There's at least two other people who want to have sex with me out there. That's so true. They could be good. the same person. They could be the same and person. It could be your wife. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the way your wife is, could is trying to communicate a sex with me. <laughs> Wouldn't be, yeah. Do I just go home tonight and try, try and be a strict teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Go home and, uh, just go, and go home and, 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 and wake her up and say, uh, very poor, see me. Yeah. <laughs> which, I mean, this is a horrible... I've been asking this question. It gets more horrible all the time. Okay. I don't know why I keep asking it. Which of the 2016 celebrity deaths has hit you the hardest? <laughs> been some good ones, haven't there? I mean, you know, bad ones. Oh, man, yeah. It's been... It's been... What's amazing is about 2016 is you're expecting it and it still surprises you. It still is an absolute gut yeah. punch, isn't it? You think, I'm going to be ready for air, whoever it is next, and then it isn't. Yeah, you're not I ready. Know, like, fucking Caroline Ahern was really sad. It, it was. really, really upsetting. Uh, I just, you know, on, front, on Saturday night coming back from a gig, just watched tons of clips of Mrs. Merton. And it really, there's nothing like it on telly. It's, it was so, was so good. I mean, same with the royal family. Loads of people have tried to do it since, and it's never been done quite as well, it left a massive sort of footprint. Um, obviously David Bowie, I don't know if I told you, but I worked in the MVC. <laughs> uh, that he ref- well, he didn't reference the MVC, he referenced the Market Square, <laughs> moving through Market Square. He wasn't talking, he wasn't talking about MVC closing down, but uh, I think he, he probably knew. Yeah. Probably knew the music video club wasn't gonna last for very long. I don't know, they're all, they're all horrible. They are. But then, like, there's so many. You kind of suddenly you remember one, and forget, and then you go, "Oh God, that he's died as well." Yeah, it's awful. I, well, there must be sort of, there must be sort of, like, old celebs going, "I can't go out this year. <laughs> I've got to just hang on because otherwise I just won't be remembered." Well, yeah. If you're a low, I, w- I remembered who it was when we were talking about this. Yeah, so there, go was on. That there was um, Victoria Wood, and who else? Who was the other one who died at the same time as Victoria Wood? Prince. Yes. And then the next guy who died was the bloke who played the uh, ballroom dancing guy on Heidi High. That's, right, that was like, pre- yeah, that's yeah. not good enough, is it? That's too, that was presumptuous of him to die. <laughs> we were waiting for... You know, Muhammad Ali would have been a great great one. Yeah, well, we, we, good news. If he, he did die, in. he did die, yeah. <laughs> he needed to come <laughs> he, in. He, he needed to come he died, in next. so yeah, great one. It was a but he needed to come in there. Or Paul McCartney or someone. It's arrogant of the... Yeah. It was arrogant of him to die, I think, at that stage. Yeah, it's, 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 it is hubris, isn't it? For any, <laughs> anyone else dying this year, I mean, get over yourself, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think will die next? Okay. The, if you had to predict a celebrity death. A se- a celebrity death pool. Um, I don't know. Is Donald Sindon still alive? <laughs> I don't think he is. I think uh, um, Windsor Davis is. Windsor Davis, then? Yeah. That's not great, is it? Then you might have got him there. You, you know, that. I know people often say, "Can you take one bit out?" I think <laughs> that might be the one bit. Because <laughs> poor old. Oh. But like, imagine, you know, by this is coming out at the end of August. Imagine he's just died the week we do this. You'll be going, 
Yes. Let me park it. Will I? Yeah. Yes. I think you and I are very different people. Yes. <laughs> Winter <laughs> Davis is dead. And have you seen the size of his <laughs> tiny hands? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I don't wish death on anyone. I'm not asking you to wish it. I'm just asking so, you to well, predict it's it. That problem, it's that, it's that jinxy It's the thing. opposite. It's the opposite of wishing it. It's saying, who do you think would, would be taken? That's, That's not the opposite. <laughs> That is definitely <laughs> not the opposite. I, I, I mean, nice spin, mate, but that is... It's who do you not want to die, though, isn't that it? That is not the question you <laughs> asked me. Who do I not want to die? I don't know, my gorgeous wife who wants to take photos of? If she does die, we'll definitely take that bit out. Uh, so <laughs> well, every cloud. <laughs> out, of, out of respect. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> But respect. No, leave it in and dedicate <laughs> the episode to her. Do a little sombre message where, like, oh, obviously we didn't realise. <laughs> Poor old Matthew's wife, Charlotte. <sighs> she was ridden to death. <laughs> Just a little pair of frosted glasses on top of her. Her tiny red-haired coffin. A little red coffin. A lot of Karen and people at that funeral. Oh my God. Why, Lord, why? You took her too young. No, I, hope, I really hope my wife does. <laughs> or Windsor Davis, I love them equally. <laughs> if you had to choose, if it was a choice, if, if it was a choice, between Windsor Davis and your wife. Sophie's choice, yes, <laughs> as it's known. Windsor Davis is an old man, it might already be dead. We don't know. <laughs> For a show fueled by Wikipedia, I'm surprised that wasn't one of your research questions. <laughs> could you, you ask that? Can you, can you have that as a new emergency question <laughs> next week? Whoever you've got. Who would you rather die, Wins Davis or Matthew Crosby? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> your new emergency question. We can do that. It's your new emergency question. I mean, what? for somebody, it's a great question to ask someone else because, you know, they probably will like Windsor Davis. They'll probably what? go Windsor, yeah. <laughs> and the worst thing is, Charlie is a big fan of the podcast. She listens to it in the bath. <laughs> Who's to say she won't go, well, if that's the way the public... If that's the way, I don't know, fucking whoever your next guest is, if that's the way Charlie Sheen feels, then I'll just lower myself under the surface of the water until the bubbles stop. It would be ironic if she drops the iPod in the bath and it electrocutes her, that's how yeah. she dies. That would be <laughs> ironic and impossible. <laughs> if it's connected to... She actually, she's one of the few people who listen to this on a toaster. So... <laughs> Excuse me, uh, audio people, while I just try Because I'll forget other. <laughs> yeah, who would you... <laughs> who would you is this your handwriting? It's appalling. Do you want me to write it in for you? <laughs> no, because I won't be able to read who that. Would you rather, who would you rather die? Or... Winter Davis or MC Wife? MC Wife sounds like the worst rapper of all time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, OK. That's, a, that's great. I'm sure she'll be delighted. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm probably just tired, but it's... yeah, <laughs> uh, it's <a> funny. <laughs> you know, it's... Oh, thanks. Yeah, what's going on my head? You, you know, it's been a terrible couple of weeks, but oh, it's been an awful couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah, but it's that's been really, really. You know, bad. it's nice that... to laugh again, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like we've made Britain great again. <laughs> I feel like we really have. Um, um, why can't everyone be babies? <laughs> Because then I just walk around trying to high five them all the time. <laughs> Why can't everyone be babies? Would you would you prefer to would you prefer to well, be a baby? Well, I wouldn't. It'd be nice if everyone was a baby because you know they'd be. We would just everyone. They're kind of nice and they get on with each other and they sort of sit around and don't do anything. There wouldn't be any bad things happening. Yeah, but um, then like th everyone would die. They would die quite quickly. I mean, that's quite a bad thing. I but know you don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> they would die quite quickly. But they're going to die anyway. So you know. So you would prefer like. <laughs> Let's say five to ten days of everyone being a baby. I don't think they last that long. Okay, well, I was. All right, let's say. Five I've got a baby. I reckon if you left on its own for, a, like, especially a little one. Okay. A oh, day. Uh, and is everyone the same age? Is everyone yeah. bang on the same age? Yeah. They, okay. So say everyone is. Uh, your baby is seventeen months. Is yeah. that right? Seventeen months at time of recording. 
uh, and my wife currently still alive. So just uh, just make sure we know where we are. They'll go, oh, that had to have been recorded in July of 2016, because we know the terrible things that happened. Uh, so we all get older, but yeah. So so everyone's 17 months. Yeah. So you let's say let's say a day, two days. You'd prefer two days, and then the entire planet is wiped out, yeah. as opposed to what we've got now. But it'd be nice. Those two days would be fun, though, wouldn't they? But no, no one would. You would. You, you're not. Well, no one remembers their life after they're dead, do they? That's a good point. So you know, no one. It's they not. would just experience it, and then they would die. I think. But it's not so much the death part of it. Of all the, I'm not like imagining. 20 million dead babies in <laughs> London. That's good. I'm imagining is we're all just sitting around playing with each other, pooing and up, pooing ourselves. And then just lying in that poo. Yeah, we good. You puking on that. yourself. Yeah. And then lying in that puke. So you'd sooner be like lying. That, is, that shows you how, what a terrible state the country is in. Yeah. That Richard Herring would prefer to be lying on his back, covered in shit and like burped up. It wouldn't even be burped up breast milk. It would be just burped up bile. Sooner than have Michael Gove possibly be our prime minister. <laughs> Seems fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, back to the emergency question. We need to get back to the real questions because the emergency questions have took taken us down a very <laughs> dark path. <laughs> very, it went very dark. Um, when you were in Whitstable doing the comedy gigs yes. that you did there, did you ever see Peter Cushing on his bicycle? Uh, no. There was a place called Cushing's Way. Right. Uh, but I don't think he was around when I was running those I think gigs. he's still... Uh, we, he was still alive. <laughs> oh, no, no. But I just mean, like, yeah. we, we, the, the gigs were, were late at night. It was too yeah. dark for him to cycle. <laughs> I guess it was. That's what I mean, yeah. No, I, uh, I, I, I never saw Cushing. Did you ever see Ben Moore in Whitstable? The, uh... Yes, he came and saw... Uh, he came and saw a few gigs there. Yeah. Uh, and I remember him uh, sitting there in the front row and looking increasingly more and more sad and then leaving without saying thanks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, there was, one, there was one gig when it all... You know, those gigs were like... I used to run a gig in, in Whitstable, in, in an art centre in, in Whitstable, uh, in, in Kent. Uh, and, Richard, you did a bunch of them. But they they could go either way, those gigs, couldn't they? they yeah, could, a little bit. They were... No, a lot. <laughs> I mean, but no, for, for, for you, you always had, had a nice time, but they would often be, like, sort of chippy audience members, and uh, it, was, it was quite near, like... It's quite near Farage country, quite near yeah. Thanet. So occasionally comics would do stuff like I, you know, like I'd be, I'd be a, a comic would drop out and I'd have to book a local guy, and I remember Ben watching a local guy doing a kind of, you know, a very. Uh, it would probably go over great guns now, but it was uh, <laughs> it was ahead of his time. Yeah. Um, this guy, in in being outwardly racist, and I just remember Ben just looking incredibly sad all the way through. Oh. Yeah. Ben was in Bad Adults. Was he? He played me. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> All the version. way through. Yeah, all the <laughs> way through. Yeah, he played. A, he played a version of, uh, of me when Tom put on a play about uh, about the the goings on in the house, and he, he right. played me. Um, and he is so thin he could fit into my clothes, right. even though he's like, what? He must be six. He's very tall. It's interesting you cast an actor who's so tall to play <laughs> to play a version of you. That was the kind of jokes we were dealing with <laughs> back in 2013. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. What a lovely guy. He's a nice guy. Do you know Ben Moore? No. I mean, that was clear from the <laughs> that was clear from the complete silence while we chatted about it. He's my mate. He's one of my mates. Has he ever done this? He's from Whitstable. He did the Edinburgh one. So look, you maybe listen to that rather than sitting there complaining. Hey, listen. <laughs> he didn't complain. He literally just answered the question in a very straight fashion. <laughs> it was a very. Do you know who he is? No, don't turn it on was, him. All right. It was no. I, I don't, and why have you wasted two minutes of my time? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what the... Sub Ooh. Oh, all right. You know what, Richard, you were right. Mate, go fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway. That's post-Brexit Britain there. That's that is that is what happens. That's what, that never used to happen, did it, in the old days? <laughs> Bloody youth of today, it isn't is. it? It's either a, a young person or a pensioner. Hate them both. People were just um, very polite. Now, you used to do a website, I couldn't find this anymore, and I can't quite remember what it was, but it made me laugh. Your website, you had a blog. I had a blog, yeah, yeah. That made me laugh, like, consistently very much, but there was a thing about racist tattoos, wasn't there? Was that what it was? That's right, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, what was it, man? Because it made me laugh so much, I, I want to find I, it. I did a review of various <laughs> racist tattoos. Um, I, I googled... I can't remember what I was... Go I, was I went on Google Images, and basically, I think, must have just typed in, like, racist tattoos. Because <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of getting, uh, you know... <laughs> Thinking of spicing up my look. Yeah. No, I, I just thought I'd, I'd find some tattoos. Um, but uh, <laughs> some of them were just like bad. I, like, I think a guy had written fuck you on his forehead. Yeah. I, just, I, like, I don't feel that strongly about anything, you know? <laughs> but like, I love the, the... But I think one of them... The one that, 
Oh, was it? F- he'd sh- no, he'd shaved off his eyebrows, yeah. and uh, he'd written "fuck you" in what I described as elegant cursive. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was what it was. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Had, but um, also, a guy had the like the Nazi eagle on his on his oh, that's throat. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which is like on his like uh, starting with his Adam's apple as the sort of swastika, and then going out all the way up the neck. And that yeah. is a real like that guy really means it. <laughs> he's like Richie Manick carving four real into his arm. He's yeah. really going for it. It is a statement. It's a, it's, a, it's very much a statement. It what? is, I will never, ever get a job at Nando's. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to get a job, unless I wear a polo neck. Yeah, why, what happened to your blog and why isn't it there? It's still there, but I, only um. I can see it. <laughs> I don't like, I got, I, I sort of, and again, it was just because I got this sort of strange relationship with the internet. I remember, like, I would... I, in fact, this is, this is like, it was kind of partly due to you, um, in that I would sometimes I would see you and we would chat as friends, but I'd know the stuff you were telling me yeah. because you'd written it already on warming up. Yeah. So you'd tell me about your holiday, and I was genuinely interested in a friend, but I knew all of the stories because you'd written like thousands of words about it, which I'd read. Yeah. So I thought, uh, A, that's happening, where I would you know, like, m- chat to people and they're like, yeah, we know about this already, so I had no, I had no bounce. Uh, you know, I thrive on bants. And the other thing was, uh, occasionally my mum would say, oh, um, like Rosemary Nelligan from the church read your blog. And I was like, oh, I don't want her seeing my reviews of racist tattoos. It just sort of, it's, so I think I just, like, I, that's what I like about Twitter. I think a lot of people have this idea that Twitter is like, shit, you know, oh, I had this for lunch today. But it's just basically, it's a way of just putting jokes out and it doesn't really reveal anything about yourself. Yeah. I've sort of been quite careful to not put too much of myself on the, on the internet. But I, I, I've been quite careful. I, 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 yeah, I know. <laughs> but I sort of, I think you've got to do it. Like, like you've either got to do it the herring way uh, and really go for it, or kind of just not. You know, occasionally you'll go like, oh, this person doesn't even have a, a, a Twitter account or a Facebook page or anything, and you know, yeah. how will they ever write for Improvisation, my dear Mark Watson, <laughs> unless they know the new technology? But no, I, I, I sort of that's that's part of the reason. Um, but you can, I can, I'll, I'll give you the login if you want to go back and read it. I would love to. Sure, me laugh. I'm gonna give it to everyone else and put it on the internet. No. <laughs> also, it's like some of it, some of it was like a genuine diary from, from like my, like I, 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 I never, I never properly went for it. It was like this is what I'm feeling at the moment. But like when I broke up with my girlfriend in uh, 2005. I was just like, I'm so, I feel so miserable. So I just put up, I just went on Google Images and typed in Don Rickles. Have you seen Don Rickles? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and just got as many pictures of Don Rickles and just made that my blog post for the day. Right. It's like, that's... Like, had I you broken up with Don Rickles? I had broken up. <laughs> yeah. I broke up with the insult comedian Don Rickles, yeah. <laughs> Little racist for my liking. Uh, <laughs> but not willing to commit to it. Um, no, like, it was just... So I, 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 I couldn't... I couldn't really pick a side of I'm actually explaining to the world how I'm feeling. Yeah. I still feel that with stand-up a little bit. Like sometimes, like my favourite stand-ups are people who are just utterly confessional on stage and really mind their life. And sometimes I would, you know, I would write shows and I'd be like, well, I'm not going to say that because not. I don't care about making myself look bad at all. I don't really. That doesn't bother me. But I would, I would think, oh, what if this hurts other people in my life? Mm-hmm. Which is weird from someone who's just talking about their wife dying for. A, <laughs> 25 minutes well, but you, you know talk about my baby dying as well so that we, we're even that's true that's yeah. true I mean yeah yeah that's so fair enough <laughs> nil nil <laughs> let's call it that but yeah I, um, I, I don't know it's, it's, it's a strange thing isn't it that's, that's what I like about doing sketch comedy is that you don't really have to no one knows who you are no but well, you can yeah. kind of you can kind of you can kind of Trojan horse in yeah, information yeah. about you know but you know, it's like we're talking about with Nish. Not everything has to be. Not comedy doesn't have to be one type of thing. So you know, it would be, be quite funny if in Papi you suddenly did a ten-minute monologue about about. <laughs> about something terrible happening in your life. But I think, it's, I think that's kind of like well, weirdly, that's sort of what we where we do our podcast. Yeah. they're not really you know they're us being ourselves, chatting as ourselves, and uh, and sometimes it yeah it does get into it. But also, you know, but that's no one else in your life wants to be mined for mit- material. Do you know, like, no, like, th- this sounds like I'm saying it directly to you, which is probably <laughs> true. Um, but, like, no one else in my life. So sometimes I, I like, I, it happened with my blog, sometimes I'd make a joke about my brother, and he misinterpreted it, and then I yeah. had to go and, you know, sit down with my brother and go, look, I didn't mean it. And I think, what, you know, what am I actually, what's the, gr- what's the what do I want more? Do I want to be able to, uh, you know, like, have consistently good gigs <laughs> um, we, and, and like people go oh he really pours his heart out or do I want to be able to have a re- working relationships with the people around me <laughs> yeah. like, which is a weird choice you know that lots of comedians have to make and I think the older I got the more I thought I'd sooner just 
you know, I'd sooner just have those relationships. Yeah, I think it's interesting, and I think like it's the danger is, the, you know, there's a line, and it's a different place for each person. Yeah. And the danger is that sometimes you will, uh, you know, over over open up in the wrong in the wrong place. I think. Totally. I think I'm I think I'm quite good at not doing that, but there are definitely times when I've done. I've never written about breakups. So I've never. I always try to not write about other people. Yeah. But you know, but well, if I break up with somebody, like if I have talked about it on stage, but yeah. I would never name the person, or I would never yeah. say. Or, or, or say anything rude or, or, or mean about them. Uh, I, I hope, anyway, because you know, fuck me. <laughs> no, that's not. It's not really. It's not really on. Yeah. What, 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 have, what, what have you done though? If you had to have, I think no. I think the only times that I think like I've used in social media. When was the last time I was doing Edinburgh? Yeah. And it wasn't going very well. I think I talked about it too much on Twitter. That's all. I think I just kind of. You know, yes. went on about well, that's, uh, that's how a, badly it was going too much on that's Twitter. That's a separate thing as well. I was chatting to Lou Sanders about this the other day, and it's the thi- like it's the, th- the thing of being honest about how your career is going is often detrimental because if you go like, well, I'm not doing that well this year, yeah. then people go, oh, I've heard about him. He's not doing that well this year, and no one goes, no one wants to go and see a show that's not doing that well. Mm-hmm. So I think you can have a knock on a personal knock on effect of doing that. Which means that I often walk around looking like relentlessly jolly <laughs> in order to be like, hey, everything's going great. Even yeah. though, you know, sometimes you, uh, you know, sometimes it isn't. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, maybe that's my, maybe that's my hang up. Which it clearly is. Yeah. Um, the, I, I, just, I, just, I just remembered actually, I think another trigger was uh, when I did Mark Watson's 24 hour show. And, uh, Not interested in that one only. No, like the, the <laughs> improvisation my dear Watson. Okay, in which case I would say no. I just I, I uh, he he had a thing where like he, uh, someone in the s- s- he was chatting to someone in the audience. They said I've not seen the movie Antichrist by Lars von Trier. <laughs> yeah. It's currently on at the cinema, and I was like, I want to see that movie. And he was like, Well, come up on stage, and you can you two can go on a date tomorrow, and we'll have a little event. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to call my my girlfriend, my now wife, and I called her up and. Uh, and said, hey, is it all right? And I was like, stupid, like, I was pissed, and I woke her up at two in the morning, and went, is it all right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, fine, I love you, bye. And then we hung up, and then the next day, I put on Facebook, like, I'm just off on a date with my new girlfriend. <laughs> and then she started getting phone calls, like, just because you're an idiot, and Edinburgh's such a bubble, yeah, she started yeah. getting calls, and then she called me up and said, Are you, why, have, why have you done this? You've humiliated me. And I, and I was like, I didn't yeah. mean to. Uh, uh, you know, luckily I've got over that now, I'll only discuss your death. Um, <laughs> But like, no, I didn't like, and I just think, ah, you know, it's just, you, I sort of value, I value my relationships more than I value my career, yeah. which is weird because if my career doesn't go better, my wife's going to leave me. So I don't know what, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but it's, it's just, yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, well, let's quickly talk, we probably should shut up soon, but um, oh, yeah. uh, now we've got a bit of time. Um, oh, great. Let's, uh, well, because you we, we mentioned uh, Pappies, and as a, as a live show, it's just unbelievably, um, you know, they've been, all the shows I've seen of it have been amazing. Oh, thank and you. I don't, but I don't think you've ever quite captured it on the, you've had various goes of doing yeah, it on TV. Yeah, that's very, that's, that's fair to say, yeah. I think. It's that thing of, it's very hard, I mean, I think it's, it's I was going to dodge the bullet again, that's true of all live performance, but, but I don't think that is true, because there's no. people who've got a live act that have gone, oh, this is, this is a great distillation of what it is. Um, I think... Uh, one of the things we've always done is we, we we love performing in front of a live audience. I mean, you can feel the energy in the room. It's electric. Um, it's um, this is what I thrive on, right? This is this is my this is my bread and butter, yeah. Richard. Um, uh, but no, I like we've always done well in front of uh, of, of live cr- crowds. So everything we've done on telly has been with a live audience, yeah. and unfortunately, that's become very unfashionable. I think you know that's that old canned laughter, laugh yeah, yeah. track. It just I think if you watch a thing, we we, we did a show. Uh, yeah, but like I said, bad alts on BBC Three, and I knew like I mean we got two series and we're, I'm super super proud of them, especially the second series, which unfortunately we isn't out there. They didn't do a DVD of it, so people can't really see it unless you sort of I, I imagine some of it's been put on YouTube. Yeah, uh, comments disabled. Fingers crossed, <laughs> um, because I've, I've, I'm phenomenally proud of those of those uh, six episodes, especially. Uh, but we would we'd be on BBC Three. And everything on BBC Three was geared towards this 16 to 24. Like, they wouldn't even yeah. allow us to play. I was 33 at the time. They're like, you've got to be 29. Like, anyone's going to watch a show and go, what, this guy's 33, <laughs> but I'm 29. I can't relate. It just is, it's crazy. Yeah. But they would, like, you've got to be 29, pretend to be 29 on the show. Um, or in fact, it might even be, like, even younger than that. But still, they, they made us do this. And every time I'd watch, <laughs> I'd watch the show... Uh, the, the trailer before it would always be like, coming soon on BBC Three. And 
like all this sort of you know crazy graphics and like a, like a dubstep song. And then our theme tune was <laughs> written by Philip Pope because like he writes TV theme tunes. So we were like, Philip Pope's going to write it. Yeah. And it was like, I was fooling around <laughs> when we were young. And you could just, I could, I, it just was such a weird fit for that channel. Yeah. I think on BBC Two it probably would have stood a better chance. Um, uh, but it was just, it, it, was, uh, it was just a really weird fit. And I think for young people who, who like have never watched like I grew up watching like uh, the British Empire and uh, Red Dwarf, and I loved those. I loved those shows, and I mean, even like you know, even Fist of Fun, you had a live audience there. Yeah. Like you made a made a feature of that, and I wanted that to be wanted it to be like an old fashioned, yeah, you know, an old fashioned silly sitcom. But the kids who were watching it didn't know all we were was a cattle grid between them and Family Guy, <laughs> you know, and so that that was uh, yeah. But we did two series, and I, I you know, I really I was. It was such an amazing thing to do, sure, sure. but uh, sure, sure. But um, I'm not. But yeah. I'm not even. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't good. I'm just saying I don't think it's, you ever. It's not a know, distillation of what we did. Yeah, I mean, but it's I, quite different than what you do uh, in the live stuff as well, though. I think that's true. But we did like the first pilot we did was was basically just the live show taped. Yeah, and that didn't work. So then they said, oh, then Channel Four said, would you like to do a game show? We did a game show, and then that again just didn't really felt a bit like a, a sort of you know sort of didn't really yeah. come across. It was, I guess it was kind of like they wanted us to do like a version of Celebrity Juice. I think that's what they wanted. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't really do that. And well, I think, the pro you know, like TV is, is not producing great ideas. You know, the, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's going away exactly from what you're talking about to be about game shows and to be, you know, very lowest common denominator, I suppose, in a way, or at least not embracing newer, more exciting stuff. So you'll, you'll get into it by doing a panel show or, yes, exactly. or a game show, but you won't, you know, they won't give you a chance to do a sketch show, I suppose. Yeah. But you know, I think it's interesting because also We Are Clang, who are a fantastic live, Amazing, yeah. live uh, sketch troupe, three people, a bit ruder than your, than your stuff. But that didn't, that didn't work as a, as a No, that TV didn't show. really. And again, they tried to do a, a, a similar thing, yeah. like a sort of hybrid sketch, sketch show, sitcom with a live audience. And I re again, I really liked it. And we had the fact for the first series, we had Ben Kellett, the same yeah. director. Um, and I think they were kind of, they sort of said, hey, this is how Clang did it. Could you do it a little bit differently? We went, well, we'll just do it more traditional. And actually, we probably should have been even, like, we probably should have been even wackier with. I, the thing is, though, whenever I see things that are very meta on telly, it sort of annoys me. I prefer something that's just straight down the middle funny. But then, you know, harder to make, harder to write, harder to perform. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but the, yeah, the podcasts are kind of hitting hitting it right though. But I mean, is that because it's sort of self produced? Well, and you're doing well, what you want to do. The, the, I mean, the, the good thing about the the podcast is there's literally no restrictions, and we can change it every. We just you know we, we can record for as long as we like, and also like it's much smaller. We were performing in in you know like a 300 seat studio. Also, look, we had to learn how to act in front of a camera, which we'd never done before. It's, why, it's part of the reason why we never filmed any of our live shows, because I think people have got very good, very good memories of them yeah. that came to see them. But I think if you saw it, you'd be like, why has he got you know, a paper hat on his head? <laughs> you suspend a lot of disbelief that way. And we also, like the first, the first series of Bad Olds, my God, we, someone, should have, someone should have said to us, hey, it's fine, you're mic'd, everyone can hear you. <laughs> you don't need to be screaming your head off. <laughs> It's like it's so frantic and what, like and it, it, you know and also because we were excited to be in front of a live crowd yeah, yeah. and when we come out during a lo like a Pappy's live show the first three sometimes thirty minutes is us just going ah! <laughs> and that works because the crowd go ah! back at you and you can feed off their energy yeah. but if you're just sitting at home watching it you go what the hell are these cunts up to <laughs> it's like and I think that was you know we we, we never we well I think the second series we'd learned more how to perform in front of a camera and how to write a uh, write a good show, but by that point BBC Three was going. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was dead. So, but uh, I mean, you know, you know, some things aren't meant. You know, some things work in one context and aren't meant to be another thing. Anyway, you know, it's not. I mean, th those live shows are amazing. Anyway, regardless. Yes, that's true. It's a shame that we, you know, we're not going to see them because we haven't recorded them. But no, I think I there's, there them, might so. be a recording of one of them right. somewhere. Uh, we did a gig in. Cornwall, and a guy filmed it. <laughs> right. But I've lost his email, <laughs> right. and uh, I don't know. But that's on his phone or, if, or, pro or properly? I, like I, 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 I think it, yeah, it was just you know, just he just got a camera yeah. phone out and yeah. just films like thirty seconds of it. That's right. all that recorded. No, he, right. he it was like a proper shoot. Yeah. Like you know, just like this, real proper. Yeah. You know, you know, whatever three camera shoot, and uh, but we just never got in, got back in touch with him. <laughs> I don't know. It, again, it's sort of. It all, it all fits with this idea of not ever wanting to ruin people's memories of it, <laughs> yeah. you know? 
Like, I just think people have... That. It's, it, like, I really liked... Did you ever do... do you, have, you, have you ever done any of the sort of stand-up uh, TV shows? Have you ever done, like... Uh, I did Russell Howard's one. I right. Haven't, I haven't done, I've done a couple, yeah, Edinburgh and Beyond and stuff. Russell Howard's one's a pretty good one. Yeah. Except I think the, the audience are always so young. Yeah. Uh, that's it's, it's quite it's quite weird. I See, pretended to be twenty nine. Of course, yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go, why is that? What's happened? He's got some terrible wasting disease. Yeah. <laughs> but I really like the one they did. I thought was really good. Was one called Dave's One Night Stand. Did you, did oh you yeah, ever do I did that? do that one. Yeah, and yeah. I thought that was like the best distillation of what stand up is. Yeah. Because there was one that was it was like uh, it was Johnny Vegas. I think it was Seymour Mace and Justin Morehouse and Johnny Vegas. Yeah. Really like three amazingly funny guys. And they did that sort of big swooping crane shot of the crowd uh, as Justin Morehouse was coming on. And you could see people going to the bar. <laughs> and I thought, fucking that's amazing that they, they put that in because that's what stand-up is. Yeah. Like, it is, it is things failing and, and people going, oh, I've seen this guy. You know, like, <laughs> like or, or, or wandering off. And I think that's the thing that telly, it softens the edges of things to a certain extent so that it doesn't feel like it's fun or live or exciting. Yeah. That's what's good about, about podcasts, you know, like, just, you know. Who gives a fuck? Just yeah. leave it all in. Yeah. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all forget what we're doing up here. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, uh, are you going to, um, what's that? Am I? I don't know. Are you going to? <laughs> am I going to? <laughs> are you going to fly, fly am I going to fly a kite later on? I am, actually, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go to Blackheath Common after this and fly a kite? Yeah, have you ever flown a kite at night? N- night kites? Yeah. No. <laughs> we could be onto something. <laughs> Would you have to could put you ring your wife? I'll ring my wife and I'll wake her up. I won't ring her from the wife. stage. I've been burned by that before. But yeah, I'm up for flying a night kite yeah, if, you're, okay. if you want to. Do you want to go in one of the big ones, the Julia Sawala lifting ones? <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll, what, what, where will sell us a kite at this time of night? Because it's now, we're in, we're in Leicester Square and it's <laughs> two minutes past ten. Amazon Prime? You can do that Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime now. Yeah. There's the Amazon Prime now thing that yeah. we could actually get a... I mean, we're getting into Chris Ramsey territory here. Can we get a kite delivered to a theatre? It's, it's, it's not quite pizza on a train, is it? Um, it's not. Uh, yeah. I can't remember. I was going to ask you about the future of uh, uh, Pappies. And what you, uh, the thing is, you, you all like each other, right? You get on very well with each other, which yeah, we I do, always we do find fascinating as a, in, a, in a group of well, comedians that's, that's, working together. That's interesting. I was, I was going to ask you about this, because like, we, do, we do genuinely get on. We yeah. don't... Uh, and in fact, we, one of the things... Like was we were living, you know, when we were making Bad Ops, we were living up in Glasgow. We were living together. We were writing together every single day. We were uh, filming together every day. But we never really, like, didn't really have any any uh, any big fallings out. We yeah. just because you know, you live in the absolute dream. You're getting to make a make a sitcom, whatever the rest of the world <laughs> thinks. Uh, you're getting to, to to live that, but we we don't. I mean, we have we have to dos occasionally. Yeah. But I was going to ask, like, you've been in a couple of uh, different double acts. I have. Uh, when for both of them did you know it was over? <laughs> um, well, I mean not over, but you know when do you think ah oh, we've probably gone as far as we can go? I think you know we with Lee and Herring it wasn't really our choice. I mean I think it was good for us to to stop. What what, what do you mean it wasn't your choice? Like well because we we, we, we were decision. we were working and then then the TV said no more and then we had to go and make a living and that's and sort of what we're we're sort of at that stage now yeah. in that yes yeah, we we had you know those two successful uh, years yeah and now we are like we're podcasting but obviously as you, well you know no one became a millionaire from that. And I'm doing, I'm program associating my little nutsack <laughs> off every single day I can. Uh, and uh, Clarky's doing adverts and Tom's doing lots of directing and stuff. But yeah. we, you know, in terms of actually doing stuff together, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, we don't make a lot of our money through, through no. pappies. But that's, that's kind of the challenge that we're in at the moment, is I trying think to still create and trying to still work together that I, way. I think, A, you've got outlets which we didn't, you know, we, we could have carried on doing live work, I suppose, me and Stu. Yeah. But, you know, you're dividing it, it's still different, you're dividing between all those yeah, different we don't people. Make a lot so, of that alive, uh, yeah. But I think, you know, we would got to a point where we probably both wanted to go our own separate ways anyway. I think we might have done another series, but I don't think we'd have done much more. So, you know, we knew it was, you know, we knew we were, you know, we would wanted to do different things. Yeah. And I think... You know, we, this gave us the option to go. Okay, let's go and do different things. Even though he he script edited on the Al Murray thing that I then did for the next two years, so we were still working together for another sure. couple of years, even even though we weren't working together uh, in the double act. Uh, uh, are yeah. you happier now? T- t- were you happier then or, or now? No, I'm definitely happier now. I wasn't it wasn't very happy doing Lee and Harry. Right. It was very, it was hard work, and it was uh, you know we we didn't get on all the time. So do you, do you look back on the work with like 
fonts and stuff. Do you see the work separate from the difficulty of the? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It was. You know, it was. It was. I just look. But we worked so hard that I couldn't enjoy it. So I look back and go, oh, if we had that time again. I would I sit back and enjoy what we were doing that's a bit so more. That's, that's, that, that, that's that, life, isn't it? That's yeah, the way life works yeah. out, that you don't ever... You look back and go, yeah, oh, that was a good but, time. But, you know, we had an amazing opportunity, and I think at the time it just felt, oh, this is the thing that happens, this is the thing that happens. Yes. I, think, I think if it had been another five years down the line, I'd have gone, oh, fuck, this is pretty amazing, you know, let's make the most of it. And not the, I'm very proud of what we did, and I think it's good stuff, And but, uh, you know, I'm also glad we're not doing it anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's, so. I mean, it's, it's, you, you're right, it was, a, it was an amazing opportunity, but I think now it's... It, like, if you're a new comic now... It's the, like every like if you go and do gigs in London, there'll often be like fifteen acts on the bill. Yeah, they're all new, and lots of them are very good. Yeah, uh, it's not like they're all just you know lunatics. It's there's, there's people who are really 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 talented. Yeah. So how do you make yourself stand out? It's very it's horrible. So, yeah. and, and you know, and then if you get something on TV, you know, you've got you've got as you say, you've got two series on TV. Yeah, but it's you've still got to you've still got to stand out from that. So yeah. you know, you've got to stage that most people will never get to. Yes, and and then you know, and you've done your stuff and you're happy with it, which is the same similar to me and Stuart. Really, at the time we were we were doing stuff and no one was a it was a because there were less channels, it was a bit more of a thing, but it wasn't yeah. a massive thing. But you know, but that that's I think as you get older, you sort of understand uh, that you. You know, the, the things you're aiming for. I think the thing I've realised, the things that I was aiming for at 25 weren't worth having. Yeah. And so, and actually the things that I've got are much more, well, I would have never have sort of thought, oh, that's what I want to do. But it's much more, you know, you've got much more to be happy with what you're doing. Yeah. So that's why I think like doing great live shows, if, the, if you can translate them to TV, great. And if people, loads of people love it and they want to see you come do well, great. But if you're also, you know, I think that what you're saying, you're creating, what I love about comedy uh, is that you're creating a memory and it's not always a good memory. Yeah. But, but you know, you're creating a memory of that night and then for the live audience especially, I think it's like you know, you've got that, especially with these marathon I mean, p- podcasts. We yeah, do, you know, I mean, we're creating some memories right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're creating dreams for the people who are currently sleeping. <laughs> um, no, I think, I think when people look back on this night, yeah. they will... <laughs> I think when people look back on this night, yeah. they'll think uh, it was a lot of lot of early promise, <laughs> but it just didn't quite translate <laughs> to a to a successful second half. <laughs> no, no, you're you're absolutely right. I um I, but I think I like I, the thing is I I I have a brilliant like I have a brilliant life. Yeah. So I, it's you can't feel you can't feel sorry for yourself for a second when things no, go wrong career wise. If you are enjoying working with the boys, which yes. you, and and you are still getting on with them, you know, I think that's. I we think do in the, in I think the most things, part. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's times where I've gone, oh, you know, I, you know, we should have, I should have not done that thing or not done that thing, you know, looking back. But yeah. you, you've got to, you learn through doing it. But if you're still having a nice time, yeah. then don't, you know, just carry on doing whatever you're doing. And then that stuff might come out of it or it might not. But you're creating, you know, I think some people are always just looking for, oh, well, how, where will this lead? No, no, so, no. I so, like, a lot of people with this podcast going, oh, so do you want to do it on their telly? Or what's, what's, the, what's the game plan? The game plan is let's do this and see what happens yeah. in, in the night. But um, it's not... You know, it's palpably not looking for it. No, no, no. There's, you no, can never way. Do, there's no way this could be on but that's TV. What, that's what I, yeah. lo- I love about it. But yeah. also, you wouldn't... Like, the relationship that you have with your podcast listeners is so much more intense than someone who's like, oh, yeah, I think I saw you on Mock the Week. That's, like, that's so ephemeral, isn't yeah. it? And people... Like, if, if you absolutely smash it, uh, you know, or you become someone like, like Frankie or, you know... Uh, or, or Russell, who just leapt out of that show and, you know, got these incredible diehard fans, then maybe, yeah. But most people, you're just like... Another guy or yeah. another girl, probably and more like another guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it can just lead to you do, into a sort of dead end, dead end in different ways. So you know, it's, all those things are interesting. But I think the most, if you're having a nice time, and you, there's and you are making some money yeah. doing being on the last leg or whatever you're doing, yeah. then it's then it, you know you're much luckier than most comedians. Most comedians don't get to be on. Rich Hangs Leicester Square Theatre podcast. That's true. And admittedly, you were a very a late, very late booking. Dish. A very late booking. <laughs> After you'd already asked, are the rest of Pappies around? And I said, no. You said, well, are you around? I said, yes. It's like, oh, okay, there we go. It's awful. It's, I got an email today asking for um, if, uh, if they, they could book showstoppers. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I then got another very quick email going, I meant Pappies. But it, was all, it was all like, we want, a, we want a really fun musical improv troupe. And uh, I had to then go, I'm sorry, we're not, we're not around. But yeah. Have you asked Showstoppers? <laughs> because, uh, but yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've, got a really, I've got a really nice, I, like I'm very happy with the position I am. Yeah. I, don't get, I don't get any bother from, you know, people on the streets or audiences or... Uh, <laughs> 
or anyone other than my wife when she hears what I've been saying about her on a podcast. <laughs> That was an interesting choice, wasn't it, for that guy to come on at the end of Waiting for Godot? Yeah, I think, actually... <laughs> Got to end with a callback, anyway. Yeah. But, uh, I think, actually, yeah, I think he was probably, truth be told, having a small mental breakdown that I was, <laughs> I was part of, uh, and so were the, were the other people in, in the play. Yeah. But, um, but also, as well, that, that was, like, now I'm a teacher, like, imagine what the other teachers must have been thinking. He dances on at the end with a sign saying Godo. <laughs> wearing, a, what, wearing those plastic Union Jack bowler hats. It's I'm absolutely... <laughs> why would you think... Like, that's... Not only... Not only are you not understanding the play, that's, <laughs> put that to one side, but these are young children who are getting their moment to perform two nights of a play in front of their parents. We've rehearsed it. He didn't tell us he was going to do that. <laughs> These are young people. This is, our, you know, the first time we get to tread the boards. It's going to lead to two mediumly successful careers. It's, you know, this. How, what? What are you thinking? It's that. That's the other thing as well about teaching is that teachers often forget it's not about you, and uh, that's why I got out of it. Yeah. I just, I just, I just like the idea of Samuel Beckett sitting in the audience going, Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Only I thought of that. That's what it needed. It was all that build up. He's given it to. He's given it to his director. It's still not got an ending. I mean, if you can think of anything, fill your boots, mate. But I just, I don't know what it's going to be. <coughs> oh, look, it's been lovely talking to you. It's sorry, been really good sorry, I was rude to like your friend Victoria in the audience. Hey, it's it's all right. She's a bitch. Uh, Whoa, but, uh, no, I, you absolutely cannot end on that. <laughs> It's Victoria and Gordon. I, I met them yeah. this weekend. They they run the uh, comedy they, podcast. Are they, new Twitter friend, feed. are they new friends of art? They, they are new. They are new. Oh, I love new them friends. as well. I was only joking. Yeah, they, I like their comedy they do that, podcast. They do that comedy podcast. They're not going to mention me on that comedy podcast. No, you're off the algorithm <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> They're very nice. It was a kind of joke. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that you qualified. It was a kind of joke. <laughs> kind of joke. Um, so we're going to go and buy some frozen veg yeah, and, and throw it into the sky and pretend it's a kite. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> That'll be our night sorted. It'll be good. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to the fantastic Matthew Crosby! How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>